imagine you're an investigation officer and you need to find the criminal in the case assigned to you. You are given samples of blood obtained from the crime scene and have three suspects on the list. How will you find out which suspect is the criminal? And the case doesn't end here. Simultaneously, you have to hand over the little kid of the victim to one of the two men claiming to be the child's father. How will you solve both the mysteries together? There is one solution for both the problems and it's called DNA fingerprinting. This technique is very crucial in terms of advancement in modern science and technology. It's a technique that helps us analyze our unique DNA just like the unique fingerprints that we have. The profiles at the end help us analyze the DNA of every individual. For instance, looking at the results of the first part, we can almost be sure that suspect 2 is the criminal. And similarly in the second part, we can say that individual 1 is the biological father of the child. Does every person really have a unique DNA? Of course. DNA is termed as the blueprint of life. It's a specific set of instructions that gives rise to the characters that's seen in the organisms. But this is something that we're aware of today and it wasn't known back then. So who discovered that DNA is so important? Which scientist or scientists contributed towards finding out that DNA is the code for all the characteristics in us? Let's find that out by going back in time. Firstly, let's have a look at the milestones in this journey. To begin with, we have the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel, who introduced the concept of heredity to us. He was the first to hypothesize that there are factors which pass from parents to offsprings. This was around mid-1860s. However, his work was largely ignored. It was around the first decade of the 20th century that the two scientists came up with the theory which helped prove Mendelian genetics. Who were the two scientists? They were Walter Sutton and Theodore Boveri. They put forth the chromosomal theory of inheritance, which helped shine some light on the long-ignored work of Gregor Mendel. However, Sutton and Boveri's work gained better acceptance with the next milestone, which was achieved by the father of experimental genetics, Thomas Morgan. Morgan's work on the little fruit fly was very instrumental in proving the fact that genes are located on the chromosomes. His experiments helped explain the location of eye color genes on the X chromosomes in Drosophila melanogaster. We have seen the history of genetics until this time. Now it's time we move a step ahead in the timeline. Until this time, scientists believed that genes, which are the units of heredity, are majorly made up of proteins. In other words, the chemical nature of the genetic material was thought to be proteins. However, this wasn't really considered to be a fact. It was just an assumption. People were still trying to figure out what exactly could the genetic material be made up of. It was around 1928 that a breakthrough was achieved in this field. A British bacteriologist named Frederick Griffith reported for the first time that tiny organisms like the bacteria are also capable of transferring genetic information. His famous transformation experiment ignited the curiosity regarding genetic material. A few years later, around 1944, three scientists named Avery, McLeod and McCarty figured out that the transforming principle, or the unit of heredity to be precise, is actually DNA. And this was strongly supported by the work of Hershey and Chase later around the year 1952. The simple experiment by these two helped prove that it's DNA and not the proteins that form the core of the genetic material. Later, the structure of the DNA built by the efforts of Franklin, Watson and Crick formed a strong foundation for modern day genetics. This timeline helps us with the milestones achieved so far in genetics. 
Let's have a detailed look at each of these experiments and events in the upcoming parts.